38 years ago, Ron Burton Sr. had a vision. He knew what it meant to struggle. He knew how it felt when situations and circumstances limited what he could hope to accomplish. Ron Burton grew up in Springfield, Ohio, went on to be an All-American at Northwestern, and in 1960 he became the first draft choice for the then Boston Patriots. In 1984, Ron Burton formed the Ron Burton Training Village. He believed that every child deserves an opportunity to succeed, and he created the Ron Burton Training Village to give them that chance. That vision continues today, building on a legacy of courage and hope. The mission of the Ron Burton Training Village is to train and challenge youth to achieve their purpose through education, leadership, physical wellness, social advancement, and spiritual growth. I met Ron Burton in 1991 at a golf tournament that was going to benefit the Ron Burton Training Village. I heard his message and I embraced it. I had the opportunity to take my wife, uh, Virginia, and to visit the camp recently, and it is a magnificent facility. So today, we are visiting the Ron Burton Training Village. And finally, I get to see this wonderful place that Richard's been talking about for so long. I've been associated with Ron Burton Sr who passed away, I don't know, uh, 10, 12 years ago, uh, but about for 30, 35 years or so. And uh, Ron purchased this, uh, I don't know, 300 acres of land in Hubbardston, Massachusetts, which is almost 45 or 50 miles west of Boston. And he created this camp for kids to be able to spend five weeks in the summer uh, away from the influences of their neighborhoods in the inner city and having the ability to do some training, uh, physical and mental. Uh, so the camp allowed them to uh, have a lot of summer activity that they were not used to having uh, when they, uh, in their normal life in the city. Uh, they also had some education uh, that prepared them for SATs and prepared them for college. And as the children you know, came to the camp, uh, as young as 12 or 13 years old, and they were allowed to come back each and every year uh, for no cost at all. All they had to come was with their, the clothes that were on their back, and they were provided with their uniforms and sneakers and uh, room and board, um, camaraderie, and uh, uh, a terrific, terrific experience. And from some of the videos I've seen, they also taught them how to basically connect and pray and meditate and uh, in some cases read the Bible. And it was very much of working with everything about the individual. Yeah, and if you want to read the four <laughs> tenets of, of, uh, of uh, the camp. Love, peace, patience, and humility. Love, peace, patience, and humility. The other thing they say is uh, God first, uh, you second, and me third. It's God first, others second, and me third. The message. Each morning for five weeks, they get up and they run for seven miles. And initially, it's very, very difficult. There's no other place in the world that you're going to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, run down a straight wing, give high five to 100 guys, saying, let's go, let's go. Accomplish something big for them. Teach me how to be strong. Teach me how to push myself. Each successive day, they get stronger and stronger. They work in the gardens. Ron Burton used to run with him himself. It's not easy, but it makes them strong physically and mentally. Ron was such a great leader.
the challenges that Ron had was to have a facility for his children. And I worked on a project and we built a Boston Capital Unity House, uh, which housed a hundred boys uh, during their five weeks at the camp. Ron has made an impact on a lot of people's lives, uh, both campers as well as adults. Ron had an incredible way of expressing his gratitude and his gratitude and his thanks and he was uh, overflowing with it but it was very very sincere. In 2020 during the COVID pandemic the Training Village had a major capital campaign and I was able to introduce the Ron Burton Training Village to Commodore Builders which I was on the board of directors and we did a $300,000 renovation of the Boston Capital Unity House uh, as well as other buildings and now the Boston Capital Unity House is a STEM uh, research and development and educational center for the campers. I've been involved with Ron since 1991 and I was honored by the Ron Burton Training Village in 1998 as the Humanitarian of the Year which is one of my proudest possessions. The Ron Burton Training Village sits on a beautiful pond, the Wake Pond in Hubbardston, which gives a certain amount of serenity and peacefulness uh, for the campers and it's just a very spiritual place. Hello, Mr. Burton. Things about you. It's a pleasure to meet you. How are you? Good to see you. I'm great. Give me a hug. Come here. Give me a hug. How are you doing? Virginia. Virginia is a pleasure. I didn't want you to come all the way out here for me. I would obviously come out here for you. Come on. A lot of the kids struggle with just, they've never been in this atmosphere before. Correct. So it's a totally different, completely different life, completely different world. Right. And we take, you know, there's no electronics allowed, so the phones, headphones, iPod, all that. Good thing. Away. <laughs> Basically, he, he modeled this after how he grew up and the things that changed his life. So he was, you know, so poor, and the first time he ever heard symphony music was at Northwestern University. Oh, wow. First time he ever heard it walk through a garden was at Northwestern. Uh -huh. But it opened his whole mind up. Sure. And he said, I, the effect that that had on him, he goes, I don't need to build a place like that for kids, because it changes your outlook. Mm -hmm. When all you've seen is, you know, poverty and city and just... Right. This change... You know there's nothing else to yeah, go Yeah, you're just in survival mode. Exactly. And so, here... Um, my dad wanted to give them his best, and at the same time, you know, if you look around, there's beauty everywhere, and <clears throat> the architecture. He said, when they come here, I want the kids to see beauty no matter where they look. His right. philosophy is, if you see beautiful things, you think beautiful thoughts. And so, the gardens, the architecture, the buildings, when he used to travel around the world, speak, he said, there's nothing like the Grecian art. Give in to right, it. Right, exactly. Oh, that's this great. Oh my room. gosh, look at this. So, so we come in, we wake him up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard about that brutal part of it. Run seven miles every day. The and, seven uh, mile part. I, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it, and it's a tough run. Yes. But, but the run is, yes, it gets in shape and all that, but really it's about how you talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. while you're on the run. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come up to these, and we have some hills, when you're at the bottom of that hill looking up, what are you saying to yourself? Are you saying, oh gosh, I'll never make it, or just take this one step at a time? Yeah. Because that's what life is going to be like. Right.
create a place on the earth where everyone just loves each other. You can change a lot of things. And so <clears throat> we were like, okay, dad, <laughs> what does that really mean? Uh -huh. and, uh, so, so how old were you around that time? So I was uh, like 16 or 17 when okay. we were talking about this. And uh, my younger brothers were like, you know, eight and seven. And Stephen was at that point just in college. And uh, <clears throat> so he searched for a couple of years for land and he would come back with different, oh, I saw this and he'd show it to us. And then, but it wasn't, nothing was going right. And then this, he put a bit on and ended up going through a lot of stuff that he ended up getting it. I mean, what year? That was in, he bought in 1984. Okay. And our first year of RBT was 1985. I admire the fact that he brought the family in and to let all of you know what he was thinking. Oh yeah. And yeah. discussing it and also letting you know what it was going to mean for all of you as a family. All right, so we're in the golf cart and we're going to take a little tour of this uh, emporium. <laughs> the football field. So we had, the reason why we have a windsock on our goalpost, uh -huh. we had four helicopters land out here this oh, year. Oh, really? We had Bob Kraft landed, a guy named uh, Herb Chambers landed, a guy named Gary Joel landed, and we had to paint landing areas <laughs> on the field <laughs> to come in. Oh, uh, it was beautiful because yeah, it was, oh, it was a great gosh. day, great day. And we got some great donations from in our capital campaign, and as you can see, uh, this is the Hale Fitness Center now, Very and nice. uh, he gave us some money to help redo this. And we'll take Who's that Hale? Inside. Rob Hale. Oh, Rob Hale. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know Rob. This looks like something for a football team. Yes, yes. This is like a Division One college way. Oh, I've never seen it. <laughs> and so now everything is a video. What am I doing? Am I hitting this? Oh, you're hit running, don't you? Oh no! Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Careful. Have I got it? No, no, yeah, I think better. you better spot him. <laughs> it's a good thing you've got wonderful support there. <laughs> Let's go to the building. Yeah, let's go yeah. see the Boston Capitol Unity House. is like when on, when on that run, you know, it's a hard run. And when you try an 11 year old run seven miles, so you might have something wrong with right? <laughs> right. And, but what happens is you have 129 other guys patting you on the back saying, hey, you know, we can do this. Yeah. And they're all struggling together. Right. There's a bond that's built. Mm -hmm. So I watched us go from uh, <clears throat> like before social media and all that stuff was even existing. And they end up using that social media to keep the bonds even tighter. Yeah. And so it was really something. Uh -huh. And now they just have, uh, mm. you know, lifelong friends. And, and so they're also, so that's part of the, the formula. It's part of, the, you know, they're in contact with like-minded mm -hmm. people gone through. Changes everything. It's, it's, it's substantial what's going to happen to change. Uh, just from... <clears throat> wow, gosh. your dad was such a visionary. He, he was. He was. Oh, wow. 
felt again what an honor. Well, someday I mean, your family has been a real inspiration to me. Um, uh, just uh, uh, I, on all my keychains, I still have. You still do. <laughs> I still have the little. <laughs> oh, he does. The little oh, gold uh, uh, shield. Yeah. And um, I wow. mean, it's one of the one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my my career, and to help. And um, I continue to want to help, and I will in the future. Well, I tell you, I can't. Like I said, this guy has been unbelievable. Um, but the spirit out of which he does stuff is yes. unbelievable. Yes. You know, that's. I love that. Yeah. Yes. And so you, how do you not come and love this guy? He's got know? a he's got a rough exterior, but he's got an no. He's got so under I, I know. Yeah, he can't he can't fake. He can't no, he, he can't fool he can't us. Fool you. No, right. not at all. I'll tell you, I love you, big guy. <laughs> you know, his father used to call me the big guy. You know, so that meant I was really important. <laughs> Until I found out everybody Everybody's was a big, big guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good to see you. Great to see My you. My love to your mother. I think. Every kid should have a place like this to come to because we don't need the city all the time. We need nature and we need to appreciate what we have. Please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you get notified when the next video is posted. Thank you for watching.